We're tracking something really interesting going on right now. It's a surge in voter registration in key groups ahead of the November election. Among young black women, registration is up more than 175 percent. You heard that right. More than 175 percent in 13 states. That's compared to the same time in 2020. This according to the data firm Target Smart. Registration has also increased among young Latinas and black Americans. Tom Bonnier joins us now. He's a senior advisor at Target Smart. Tom, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. 175%, can that possibly be right? You must have triple-checked this or many more times than that. You're right to repeat the number because I more than triple-checked it. It's incredibly unusual to see changes in voter registration that are anywhere close to this. I mean, to remind people, 175% is almost tripling of registration rates among this specific group. You just don't see that sort of thing happen in elections normally. And what does that tell us, if anything, about either enthusiasm, attention, propensity to vote for these newly registered participants? Tells us a lot. The reason that we look at this voter registration data is because the polls will only tell us so much. The polls tell us how people are gonna vote. They don't tell us if or who is going to vote. It's a big question. The best indicator of that is the actions that people are taking. Number one, registering to vote. Someone who says, I wanna participate in this election. And so as we've seen these questions of which side has the advantage and intensity and enthusiasm, we look for changes in voter registration like this. People who are newly registered to vote are much more likely to vote on election day. So it not only means that there's a bigger pool of voters for either campaign to draw from and turn out on election day, but generally it's an indicator of a broader enthusiasm among that specific group. So people who are already registered to vote, who look like those voters who are registering to vote, tend to vote at higher rates when you see those surges in registration. What do we know about Republican registration and men? Well, for the longest time, really from 2000 forward, we were seeing Republicans winning the registration battle, so to speak, especially in key states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and elsewhere, you were seeing them register more voters. They had more intensity and enthusiasm. And so this is important because our analysis started on July 21st, which is the day that President Biden announced that he'll be withdrawing from the race and Kamala Harris uh, uh, announced her candidacy. And so that moment seems to be a potential tipping point in this race where we're seeing suddenly Democrats saying, I'm fired up. I want to participate. And since then, you've seen Democrats out registering Republicans. Now, anyone who does a quick Google search of your name will find out that you're a Democrat. But this is not Democratic or Republican data. And you don't care. What you care is what the data tells you. The most important thing for us is getting the data right. And so when we run an analysis like this, it's publicly available voter registration data that comes from state election officials. We just take it and we run counts like this. Uh, when I was trying to answer an interesting question to me about whether or not we had seen some sort of tangible change in this election that I think a lot of people were feeling. We can draw some conclusions from demographic data behind someone who registers to vote, but we can't be for certain. But some states do provide partisan information along with registration information. Anything to glean from that? That's right. So we look at partisanship, as you say. Some states allow people to register with a party. Many do not. So we look at both. In the states that do not allow it, we actually model partisanship. But in those states where it's just partisan registration, we're seeing where prior to this uh, point, July 21st, where we began our analysis, Democrats were about even with Republicans among new registrants. After this date, the gap has increased to close to 20 points in this sample of states. It's a huge increase. I want to ask you something that overlays registration with polling. Can pollsters add these newly registered, registered voters to their likely voter models? Will they? And if they don't, could they be missing something? They should. It's difficult. The hardest thing for any pollster to do is to accurately construct a prediction of turnout. Who's going to vote? For a likely voter poll to be perfectly accurate, they have to predict a lot of different demographic groups perfectly. And no one can do that. The hardest thing for pollsters is when there's a lot of volatility in the electorate, when a lot of voters who didn't participate in prior elections come out to vote. 
potentially that's what we're seeing. At least this is an early indicator that we could have a lot of first-time voters. First-time voters generally aren't showing up in these polls. They're generally people who have not been that connected, and they're going to be harder for pollsters to reach. Tom, I want you to tell the audience a story about Kansas and this data and what you learned in the abortion referendum that was on the ballot there. Well, there was, a, there was a similar question two years ago after the Dobbs decision, June 24th of 2022, which was how it would impact the electoral environment. The first test of that was a ballot initiative in Kansas that was expected to be very close. In the end, it wasn't. The pro-abortion rights position won by about 18 points. When we looked at the voter registration data to see who was registering in the lead up to that vote, we found something shocking. 70% of the people who were registering to vote were women. It showed that there was an intensity and enthusiasm. Now, in the end, that's what we saw carry through. It's the reason why uh, there wasn't a red wave election because of that impact from the Dobbs decision. So a similar registration analysis in Kansas, similar to what we're looking at here, uh, showed to have a, a true impact on the election uh, and be predictive of what would happen a few months later. The forgotten party. My fellow citizens. It is strong. It's my duty to report the true problems of our nation. We vigorously developed this resource to be of great benefit. For diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. I will be eternally grateful for your support.